has it freezes. Hey, how are you doing? Hang on a second. I met you uh, a while back. You did. I'm just videoing. Nice to see you again. Good to see you. Just I'm like, who's, who's video yourself? Yeah, no, no. Just videoing for the Bahamas trip. So, here in water. Yeah, take care, mate. All the best. Hello again. Um, I tend to find that after one good night's sleep after traveling, I end up the next night with a huge amount of insomnia so it's not even light yet and i'm up and i'm like Ugh. <sighs> anyway before i start with the coffee i will tell you what i got to today just to reiterate and i will reiterate this until everyone stops yelling at me or i'm just at the moment going to do a series of vlogs about what i do on a daily basis to get the boat ready today is going to be multiple trips to and from the supermarket to provision just to provision with the things that i need to get onto this boat and stowed before i set off so it's the tedious stuff it's bottled water i need enough bottled water to take three people across the atlantic with a 50 percent margin of error so that's working on two people sorry that's working on two liters a day per person for 21 days you do the math it's too early for me that's the first thing. Second thing is I've got to get all the tins of food that I need so that um, I can get those stowed and put away. And I think that's going to take me most of the day. So today is just going to be a long, tedious slog for me. Apologies if it's tedious and sloggy for you. Nothing I can do about it. Sometimes boat preparation is boring. Sometimes it's not. Mostly it's boring. Sometimes it's not. Anyway, that's today. I will get myself ready, go and get showered again, and get on with it. So, see you once I've showered. So I'm back in my beloved Walmart, trying to hand steer a trolley with one hand, where the trolley weighs far more than it needs to. And now I'm just gonna try and maneuver this trolley to where I need to get it to. Anyway, the reason I have a trolley that is overweight is as follows. So there we go. Things I need, well, things I need and things that I'm, I've bought. Firstly, um, bottled water. I need to carry about 120 liters of bottled water. So that's based on an Atlantic crossing of two liters a day for three people for three weeks. So it's just emergency water in case the water maker doesn't work and in case we rupture the main tank. I need drinking water, survival water for people and I always carry in bottles. That's the first thing, so that's necessity. The second thing, which is not necessity, but just me, is that having spent time in the Bahamas before, beer is ridiculously expensive. So while I am able to purchase beer relatively inexpensively, I bought six cases. And that works out as how many how many beers per day per person. But again, it's just stockpiling food and I will come and do the same thing again tomorrow and the day after and just buy dry food and tin food that I can stop by. It's just it's it's fucking far, far, far easier to provision in the US than it is going to be in the Bahamas and far cheaper. So $96 for six cases of beer and 100 litres of water. Uh, I was paying $58 a case in the Bahamas. So for anyone going to sail the Bahamas, the one thing we have found is that alcohol is just ridiculously expensive. Like crazy, crazy, crazy expensive. Excuse me, excuse me, this is us. Yeah, so buy your beer um, before you leave. Also, in addition to that, and this is just because every American boat, every American boat that I know has freezes. Hey, how are you doing? Hang on a second. I met you uh, a while back. You did. I'm just videoing. Nice to see you again. Good to see you. Just I'm like, who's, who's videoing yourself? Yeah, no, no. Just videoing for the Bahamas trip. So, Excellent. beer and water. Uh, yeah, take care, mate. You, All the best. I lost all my momentum. Actually, literally, this thing has got so much momentum because it's so heavy. Anyway, for those of you who are planning a Bahamas trip, take beer. And if you are 
near a Costco take steak if you are if you like steak so yeah so it, it's just my top tip for, for heading either offshore or as a lot of American sailors do go to the Bahamas take as much with you as possible for those of you who have been to the Bahamas more than once you will know straight away that provisioning is very very expensive and sometimes difficult in the Bahamas well, I've never been to Nassau and I'm going to go to Nassau but again it's probably about I don't know 60 to 70 percent cheaper uh, in the US hence my trip today to buy all this stuff so six cases of beer and 80 liters of water 20 times 20 times 4 is 80 so 80 liters yeah I'll actually I'm actually gonna have to go and buy more water at some point but I need to go and get this all stowed uh, and once this is stowed I can see how much room I have for more water I actually think the car is gonna not be happy with this either so there you go 80 litres of water and probably just about as much beer so this morning is the boring Walmart run or the boring supermarket run it's just to buy tins canned goods um, again it's just staples I think as a basic rule of thumb what I try to do is make sure that whenever I'm planning an offshore passage I end up with enough kind of easy to make kind of throw stuff in a saucepan and heat it up meals as possible so it's kind of pre-cooked chicken pre-cooked corned beef pre-cooked beef pre-cooked vegetables so if the weather's bad you can just throw stuff in a pot and make a tasty and fairly nutritious meal and realistically I've got tins in the bilges that I bought three or four years ago for this purpose so it's um, they store well they store for years so we'll have to deal with getting fresh food uh, fresh meat nearer the time of departure for the Atlantic crossing and hopefully try and provision for that in Bermuda so at the moment it's just getting the staples sorted out and because it's so early in the morning I can get all this stuff done realistically very quickly and quietly so um, back from Walmart it's time to start unpacking and stowing all this stuff now it is tedious as hell but one thing you do and should do when you have or you start unpacking stuff to put in bilges especially tins is get yourself a permanent marker a sharpie marker the reason is that these tins this is just a tin of pasta sauce but two things firstly you tend to stow these tins upright so you're looking down on them when you are uh, looking for them and secondly the bilge can be damp so the labels come off so You write the word pasta sauce on it. I'm always going to know which one it is. So I have about, I think I've got 120 tins. So as tedious as this sounds, I've now got to label 120 tins and get stuff stowed. It's going to be as tedious as hell. But there you go. That's what I am doing now. I kind of get to the point where I can work in the mornings and then by the afternoon I'm tired. So I want to try and get all this stuff stowed away before lunch. So as you can see, uh, I've spent the last half an hour labeling all this stuff. And I'm gonna point out a few things that um, few little tips that we picked up while we were traveling um, and sailing that may be useful to you firstly tortilla wraps they last for ages they pack into really small spaces and they do really good lunches making quesadilla um, is an amazing way to make a very quick lunch so we tend to keep packets and packets of those on board that's the first thing rice we buy in two pound bags rather than a big bag of rice because once it's open, it gets damp, so we buy many packets of rice. Peanut butter is just, if you like it, it's a really welcome addition to any diet. And there's tins of tomatoes and vegetables all around here, but things I do want to point out to you is things like this. 
tinned milk you know if you carrying fresh milk for two or three weeks is difficult so you have to use either powdered milk which I also keep or tinned milk the rest of it is just these are what I call staples I will obviously as we get to the Bahamas and then Bermuda buy kind of like the fresh produce and things to not forget toothpaste shower gel it's really important that you have these things and you think oh I forgot that and those are things multiple toothpastes and finally plastic plates and bowls now my crew across the first Atlantic trip bitched and moaned about it for ages but when the seas are up eating food from a plastic bowl is you know it's not going to break it's not going to go anywhere it's, it holds heat it doesn't kind of like so it's fairly insulated it doesn't burn you um we have friends that actually use dog bowls plastic dog bowls to eat their food out of when they're sailing offshore because they've got really wide bases and they don't tip over um i never thought it was i needed to buy a dog bowl um there's really a barking mad joke in there somewhere which i'm not going to do because that's a dad joke and i'm not doing dad jokes anyway so that is where we are i have now got to take all these tins stow them in the bilge and just put them away and i can imagine that in about three years time if i'm still filming i will be filming we will be filming I will find tins that I bought in Walmart. It's actually, I still do. I've got tins of pate in the bilge that have got like a 15 year shelf life that, you know, I bought in Spain. It's kind of nice to once in a while find a tin and think, oh, I remember buying that. But I'm a bit of a sad sack and takes pleasure in really small and strange things. Okay, so that is my morning. I've got to finish off packing all this stuff away, getting the bilges completely full and then lunch so 11 30 that's not a bad morning's work as i said i try and work i get up early try and work the mornings and then you know i've got the afternoon off to do stuff so there you go three floor panels all put back correctly um you wouldn't know that all the food is under there so we kind of use this like a mobile supermarket every couple of days we'll go in and take food for a few days um yeah, that's about it, really, so. Happy